All right, and welcome back to the demonstration of the Dofer A155-154 uh, sequencer combo. Uh, last time we were looking at just kind of the basic features of the A154 uh, sequencer controller and how it works with the A155. Uh, this time we're actually going to be hearing what it sounds like. Um, so thank you very much for your patience uh, going through some of the modes. Uh, if you were with us last time or if you're jumping right into the demonstration, we're in for some fun. So um, let's go ahead and just take a look at what's going on in the section that we're going to be triggering. So I'm going to go down to my bottom section of my G6 case. And uh, this is our patch right here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of briefly go through this because we're not going to be manipulating it that much. Uh, but I did want you to see at least briefly what is happening in the lower section. Um, so what we have here is a dual quantizer. And uh, we're going to be feeding a CV into the input here. Uh, it then is going to be going out the CV out. And it's going to be going in chord mode if we look right here. Um, it's going to be going over to my A110 standard VCO. I then have two waveforms going out from my A110 standard VCO over into my A131. And then the output of my A131 is going to be going over into my mixer, which is right over here. Um, I will be using the A155 to generate some triggers so that we have sound. Those are going to be going into the A140 here. So a gate is going to be coming into here. Output of my envelope generator is then going to go over into my A131 and help us shape our sound a little bit. So that's the basic setup. Uh, I'm not going to be going into too much detail or changing this setup down here, uh, but I did want you to know what's going on down there. Because uh, primarily we'll just be demonstrating the A155 and uh, 54. So let's go ahead and get our patch set up. So I'm going to go up to my A155 over here, and I'm going to take the post out right here. And I'm going to go down to my bottom section, and I'm going to patch into CV in of the bottom section of my A156. So now CV is going into this section right here, and going out over to A110, and so forth. Uh, but we don't have sound yet, and that's because our envelope generator down here is not being triggered. So let's get a trigger going on. Uh, I'm just going to take uh, trigger output 1 of my A155, and I'm going to go right into my A140. There we go. There we go. So now I just need to feed my output from my A131 over into my mixer, and we should hear some sound. So here we go. I have just a basic arpeggio uh, emerging from the A155. Thought I'd go a little more melodic this time around. So that's our basic sound right there. And you can see over here at our A154 that we have steady clock emerging from there as well. So we're going to start at the top of our A154 and just take a listen to the various modes that we can listen to over here. So right now we're going forward, so if we look at our A155, it's going from left to right. So let's switch over into backward mode. And we're just kind of descending down the arpeggio right there. So that's backward mode. Let's take a listen to Pendulum. see it plays that last note twice. As it comes back down. So that's pendulum mode. And then if I go random over here, and we look at our A155, it's just kind of jumping all over the place. So that's the uh, random mode. 
As I said, I was not going to demonstrate the CV control, but, so let's just kind of skip through that one. And now we're in one-shot mode, and we can hear now that it's stopped. So let's start it again just to make sure that we know what that sounds like. So keep an eye on, your, on the A155. Here we're going to start. And then it stops. Okay? Let's go into backwards mode, and then we're going to start that. So keep an eye on your A155, and I'm going to hit start. And then it stops. So let's go to pendulum mode, start. There it goes. Okay, so I think you got that one. And let's do random. This is the fairly interesting one. So if we hit start, keep an eye on our A155, let's see how many notes it plays. Okay, and then it stopped. So let's try it again. Start. That one was fairly short, but hit start again. Here we go. Okay, that one was a little bit longer. Let's try one more. Okay, so you get the idea. Uh, each time or iteration of when you hit start, uh, it will play one time, but it will play a random number of steps in the sequence as well as which steps it chooses is random as well. So, And then we also kind of explained in the last demonstration or the discussion, I guess, uh, that CV control um, does not actually perform a function or a useful function in one-shot mode. So I'm going to go back to, let's see, forward mode, and then we'll just start it back up. And then we're going to go into now sort of demonstrating the next section of our 154 where we show you how it controls the first and the last step. So right now I'm just going if I look at my 155 1 to 8 all the way across but if I adjust my dial here and keep an eye on the 155 now the first step is 2 and the last step is 8. Or I could go a little farther, maybe go up to, let's see, go up to 5. Uh, not quite on 5, let's go a little farther. There we go. So now we're starting at 5, ending on 8. And now if I wanted to, I could also adjust the last step and just bring that down. And now it's only playing two steps we can see by looking at our A155. And I'm just going to bring it back to normal, or relatively normal. Okay, so now we're back to normal where we set the first step at the beginning and then the last step at the end. Pretty straightforward on that. Um, not as complicated as I originally thought. Um, now it does kind of get a little more interesting a little bit later when we can CV control the first and the last step, but we'll look at that in the upcoming segment. Um, clock, we can increase the speed of the clock, which then of course is going to increase the speed of our sequence. And uh, the A154 goes relatively fast, so if you look at our A155, we got some fairly interesting activity over here. All the way at the highest end. I'm going to bring it down to back, back to about 5, just so we can hear a little more what we started with. Okay, so that's our uh, clock setting right there. Now the last one, at the very bottom, is our pulse width. Um, if we go down and take a look at our A140, we can see that our A140 is being triggered right here. And the LED actually represents the length of the pulse as well. So if I go up to my A154 and I bring this up a little bit, I'm going to bring it up to 5. Now if we go down and look at our A140 again, you can see that the LED is lit for a little bit longer than it was before. If I bring it up even more, up in my A154, I 
let's say to about 8. And then we go down to our A140 again. The LED is staying lit considerably longer than before. So if I bring this all the way to the max, and then look at my A140, I can see that the LED for the most part is staying almost constantly lit because the pulse width of my triggers coming down into my gate input of my A140 has gotten longer. I'm going to bring it back down to at the midpoint. Okay, so that's the pulse width setting on our A154. And just for the heck of it, why don't we just bring it all the way down to the minimum so we can hear the most staccato type notes. So I'm going to go all the way down to about there, to about the 1, and let's take a look at our A140. Our A140, these are very short, so you can see the, the lip portion of it is extremely short. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up a little bit, right to about 2. And that's kind of where we originally started. So, I think you get the idea there. Um, now, in the upcoming segment, what we're going to be looking at is modulation of the A154, uh, including uh, CV controlling the pulse width, which we just heard, and then going and maybe doing a little CV controlling of our clock CV, uh, maybe first and last step controlling, as well as adjusting the modes by external CV control as well. So, I hope that you found this demo uh, fairly useful, uh, maybe kind of demystifying or explaining uh, some of the basic features of this uh, type of setup, uh, why you would or why you wouldn't want this particular setup. Uh, so, keep on patching out there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next segment.